So we do have uh, Mr. Frank Mba, who is the Force Public Relations Officer. Uh, good morning and thank you very much indeed, Frank, for coming on today. Uh, the directive that uh, the IGP, the Acting IGP, has uh, issued, yes, lots of people internalizing it in different ways and what does that exactly mean? Now go ahead and break it down to us. Let, let, let's start with that of uh, F SARS, for instance. Yes, he says that uh, you don't have that F SARS anymore. We're going to have them in states. But you know that those who are still wondering that isn't it still going to be the same kind of scenario? What do we expect with this particular directive? Um, first of all, Chamberlain, let me use this. Go ahead. First of all, Chamberlain, let me use this opportunity to say good morning to Nigerians. I bring you greetings from Louis Edet House, specifically specifically from the 20th Indigenous Inspector General of Police, uh, Nigerian Police Force, IGP Mohammed Abubakar Adamu. And um, we are glad that you are giving us, giving us this opportunity to actually explain some of the policy trust of the new Inspector General of Police. Um, very quickly to the issue of the SAS reorganization and reforms that the IGP has um, determined to actually carry out. I want to tell Nigerians, first of all, that we acknowledge there are problems and challenges. Things have not gone the way they ought to go, and we are determined to make things right. We are determined to get things uh, in the proper perspective. Having said that, I, I want to say that the kind of reforms that the current IGP want to do with SARS, um, the reforms are not just going to be uh, mere, they're just not going to be cosmetic reforms. We are not going to deal with just uh, nomenclature issues. We're going to carry out deep-rooted reforms that are desired to make uh, not just SARS operatives, but for the entire officers and men of Nigerian police force to become citizens centered in, 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 the, in, in, in the discharge of their responsibility. We want to bequeath to Nigerians a police force that will be citizen centered, a police force that will be rules driven, and a police force that, that will be rooted in a very deep culture of transparency and accountability. Now I'm going straight to the issue of FSAS, or of, of SAS reorganization. What the IGP has done is to restore constitutionality and order. The, the, the issue of returning SAS to the command and control of the commissioners of police is actually a constitutional matter. Chamberlain, if you look at our constitution specifically, section 215, subsection 3 of the constitution, the constitution provides specifically that the command and control of the police shall be under the Inspector General of Police. However, police contingents that are based in any state of the Federation shall, subject to the command of the IGP, be under the exclusive command of the commissioners of police in charge of the states. So it is actually a misnomer, it is actually an aberration for you to have an important arms-bearing unit like SARS in, 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 in a state, and you strip the commissioner of police of every form of command, every form of control, every form of supervision on this very important um, uh, uh, operational unit. Incidentally, some of those SARS offices are even domiciled at the police headquarters of the state command. And yet the commissioner of police, who is constitutionally recognized as the one that has the command and control administratively and operationally of the state command, has no say in what they do. So it is a misnomer. We are just lucky that no Nigerian has actually dragged us to court. So first of all, what... IGP M.A. Adamu has done is to restore order and constitutionality. Number two, we are also trying to bring policing services closer to the people. Chamberlain, imagine a situation where probably a SAS operative 
somewhere in Yenegoa has misbehaved or somewhere in Bayelsa has misbehaved, and then a Nigerian whose right has been infringed upon rushes down to the police headquarters in Yenegoa, goes to the office of the commissioner of police, makes his report, and then the commissioner of police throws up his hand helplessly and says things like, oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I don't have command and control over them. They are not under me. Please go rush down to um, force headquarters Abuja so that you can make your report. That's a misnomer. That's like taking services too far away from the people. So what are we doing? We want to bring police services closer to the people. If a, a SAS operative misbehaves, for example, you can simply walk up to the office of the commissioner of police in charge of the state, make your case, and the commissioner of police is expected to take appropriate disciplinary action. Thirdly, we intend to restore what we call unity of command and control. The commissioner of police cannot be in charge of his state. He's in charge of the state CID. He's in charge of all the area commands. He's in charge of all the divisions. And yet, there is a unit there that he cannot control. That affect the effective discharge of the responsibilities of not just the commission of police, but the entire command. In policing and in, in our investigations, there are moments where, for example, you need to consul consolidate cases that are going on in your command. Let's assume, for example, you are the commissioner of police in charge of Lagos. A particular case is going on in Yaba, a particular case, and, and you just discover that that case that is going on in Yaba, a strand of it is also going on in Apapa. Another component of that case is also going on in the Keja, because that's the way criminals operate. Sometimes they are involved in multiple crimes, and, and the victims of this crime report these crimes at different police divisions. Probably a strand of it is also being handled by, by the SAS office in the command. The commissioner of police should be able to exercise his discretion in directing any of those units handling the cases to consolidate that case and direct the other, the other units to transfer those cases to the unit that is best positioned to actually deliver.